I'm Kirsten with V for Veganism, and we are here with my good friend, Eddie Sullivan. Welcome to New York, everybody. It's another thing I figured out to do, the tour bus. Veganism at its core is activism. Our friend Eddie Sullivan, who is a sound engineer by day, takes his veganism a step further by actively fighting on the streets of New York City against the abusive carriage horse industry. You realize this is animal abuse, right? How vegan are you? Uh, I'm a member of the Vegan High Council, <laughs> <laughs> which is an interplanetary governing body of vegans okay. <laughs> that regulate vegan behavior among vegans and delegate vegan policy. No, I've been, I've been a vegan about six years. Okay. And uh, the last non-vegan thing I consumed was honey that was an ingredient in this barbecue sauce that I didn't realize had honey in it. There's a sort of controversy in the vegan world over whether honey is vegan or not. And, and there are certainly <laughs> people who consider themselves to be vegan that eat honey. Well, I mean, I'm not really about to kind of dictate to somebody else what they should or shouldn't do and what they consider exploitation or oppression and what they consider to be uh, cooperation with a, a, a species. There is a really beautifully shot documentary if somebody wants to watch um, called More Than Honey uh, that is about bees as a species and as a race. Until uh, we get to a point where vegan is a societal norm, not to say that everybody's going to be vegan, but till it becomes normal, like where it's an accepted kind of baseline, I think every single vegan out there is being an activist. That we, we've reinvented the the, our own consumption in a lot of ways. Um, we're not perfect. I mean, I look, I own an iPhone, you know? How terrible of a product is that to, to folks over in, in, in Asia who are manufacturing the things and how they have to dig for rare earth materials to pr produce the thing and, you know, so look, are, are we perfect? No, you know, and when I was, you know, starting to become an adult in this culture, there were a lot of things that made me reconsider my background. Uh, there was a couple of really amazing people and a couple of kind of events that happened to me that kind of added up to me thinking about oppression and thinking about liberation. Um, I remember Exxon Valdez spill and I remember in the newspaper there being um, these pictures which nobody had ever really seen before. This was like a new thing that like people I think caused a real kind of interesting disconnect and, and, and a cognitive dissonance among people when they saw birds covered in petroleum. When I was 25 I almost lost my life due to a, a hit and run car accident and um, I instinctively knew that if I was going to really get better that I was not going to listen to the doctors that I had to kind of take charge of my own health care and I just instinctively knew that plants were the answer and I started to look at the world a little bit differently and um, I started calling myself vegan you know in like October and then went to my first uh, action for horse carriages a couple of months later. And We're here at the Hack Line on uh, 59th Street by the park where um, they keep the horse carriages. Horses naturally would want to be together in a group and they never get to do that. They are strapped to these carriages, blinders are put on them so that they are not distracted, a metal bit is put in their mouth which steers them. And if you're here watching the activities of these drivers, you see all these little additive, oppressive behaviors that add up to just a miserable life for these horses. So we want to talk to people about that. We want to try to fill them in. We want to get them to think about what they're doing and confront the oppression themselves and realize. And we've, we've been real successful. I mean, people have decided not to take the carriage rides. Thank you very much. These horses are abused animals and they're forced to work in the streets. This guy will take you around. He really knows the city. He'll take you around. It's a good choice. I'm very pro-union and pro-labor. I think unions are fantastic for people. 
The problem is, is that there's no union protecting the horses. They're doing all the work. These guys sit, sit and look at the horses behind all day. You think the horse wants to wear this stupid purple bullshit on his head? Uh, right. <laughs> if nothing else. That's so interesting to me too is, is in New York, we feel like we're such a progressive city and we do things first, but there are several cities already that have banned horse carriages. Right. So why are we on the back end of that movement? As progressive as we like to think we are, we also spawned Trump. You know, I mean, really, yep, I am. he's just an oppressive guy on many levels. So the fact that oppression like this horse, this horse carriage industry exists in this city, it doesn't surprise me when you add up all the other oppressions. NYPD is the largest militarized body of military force on the planet. It's also the home of Wall Street and, and big global banking. There's a lot of oppression that that is tied into New York City. So. Yeah, we're progressive in a lot of ways. Um, we're a vegan's paradise with all our vegan restaurants and everything. So that's that's cool. We're eating less animals in in a lot of ways. Um, but you know, this is a, a an abuse that the entire planet knows about and sees when they come and visit our city, and it's and it's really unfortunate. Police have been pretty cooperative. They've yeah. moved these guys. A bunch of times so i'm gonna actually call the police right now there's carriage horses parked where they're not supposed to be parked they're blocking a turning lane into the park and they're also in front of a fire hydrant some of them are unattended did you did you want to say something about how horrible this all is what i think vegans are actively doing is pursuing a world view that's grounded in the reality of what we see around us and we see oppression every single day in front of us and it's something that's tangible, that's measurable, that's, um, you know, has a, a, an impact on human life. You know, I mean, one of the criticisms that I've gotten in my life is like, well, you don't care about humans. And, you know, to be vegan is to really care about humans because, you know, we're not feeding all the humans on this earth. Uh, human beings are depriving themselves through animal agriculture of a livable habitat. And that's a real concern to um, folks that are way smarter than I am and have way more invested in, you know, things like biology and environmental science. At the core of every vegan's value system is the fact that they want to do as little harm as possible. If there's no reason to rely on a commodity produced by animals, why? consume that commodity. When you decide to stop cooperating with and stop participating in animal agriculture, it's, it's a revolutionary step that you're taking.